Seven is the luckiest number, so maybe it's fitting that Wi-Fi 7 claims to solve the age-old issue of your signal becoming unreliable when you're too far from your router or access point. But isn't Wi-Fi 6E still super new and super awesome? Well, it is, and it turns out that the Wi-Fi 7 spec isn't even finalized yet. That'll most likely happen in late 2023 or early 2024. But a handful of phones that support it are already out, and a few routers are available for pre-order for shipping this year. And even if you don't want to shell out 700 bucks for one, cheaper models are certainly coming. So let's have a look at what they're promising. The biggest features to be excited about aren't raw speed improvements, but range and reliability. A huge part of this is a trick that Wi-Fi 7 uses called multi-link operation, or MLO, or MLO. All previous versions of Wi-Fi involved an access point connecting to a client device on one channel using one frequency band. Think about how when you connect your phone to a Wi-Fi network, you're often asked to choose between a 2.4 or a 5 gigahertz signal. With MLO though, one router can connect and send data to your device on multiple channels using multiple bands at the same time, including, yes, the new six gigahertz band that was introduced with Wi-Fi 6E. The obvious benefit of this is a faster connection since more data can be moved around at once. But for most folks, the bigger advantage is gonna be how far you can get from the router and still have a connection that's at least good enough without having to switch to a different network. You see, the higher frequency you use, the faster your connection is, but unfortunately, the shorter range it'll be. 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is already notorious for having a relatively short range, and this is even more of a problem with the new 6 gig connections. However, MLO lets you continue using a lower frequency if you're far away from the router. So while your connection might not have as much raw speed, it'll still allow you to keep doing what you're doing, unless what you're doing is some seriously high bandwidth stuff. But that isn't the only annoyance that pops up when you move around with your phone that Wi-Fi 7 can solve. We'll tell you about another cool feature and solution right after we thank Corsair for sponsoring this video. Are you a curved display or traditional display type of person? Now you can be both with Corsair's Xenion Flex Bendable Gaming Monitor. That's right, this thing is literally bendable. Developed by the OLED experts at LG, the display bends from a completely flat to an 800R curve, allowing for a fully customizable viewing experience. Its 45 inch, 240 hertz, 3440 by 1440 p display immerses you right into the action. Take your gaming to the next level. Check it out at the link below. One way that you can make up for the short range of faster high frequency signals is to add more power to them. Sounds simple, but there are actually legal limits on how much power you can give a Wi-Fi signal. That's to prevent interfering with other broadcasts flying through the air. Wi-Fi 7 though has a couple of nifty ways to get around this kind of interference. One is called Automated Frequency Coordination, or AFC. Basically, it checks the database of registered broadcasters, such as radar or satellite, to ensure that increasing power won't have adverse effects on anyone else's activity. Another is called puncturing, where if a portion of a channel is already in use for some other purpose other than Wi-Fi, the router can still use the rest of that channel to talk to client devices. And as the standard evolves, we may see even more ways to keep your connection strong. If you're somewhere like an airport or a hotel, you might have experienced a signal drop as you move around, even though there might be an access point right there. They're all over the place in those buildings. But this is because clients like phones have a really nasty habit of holding on to their existing connection as long as they can and roaming over to a closer access point only when it's absolutely necessary. This has been a common frustration for many generations, but it's possible that a future revision of the Wi-Fi 7 spec may allow for more robust automatic coordination between access points. Again though, the spec is not yet finalized, so time will tell. But we've talked a lot about keeping the connection from dropping. What about the actual performance if you're very close to the router? Well, Wi-Fi 7 is faster. But as with any new revision of Wi-Fi, you can't go by the maximum speed it says on the box. Although Wi-Fi 7 can use insanely huge 320 megahertz wide channels on that six gig band, most devices will still likely use 160 megahertz channels on a two by two connection. So realistically, I'd expect close to three gigabits per second optimistically, but that's still much faster than the vast majority of internet connections out there. And there are a suite of tools within the Wi-Fi 7 spec to reduce latency as well. So we might finally have a version of Wi-Fi that you can game on without getting fragged by someone that uses an ethernet cable for absolutely everything. A girl can dream. 
So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit us up in the comment section with your ideas of topics we should cover in the future.